Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending February 25th. First up, with the economy being kind of down, a lot of people are still looking for work. Well, NASA happens to be hiring. Um, they're going to want several applications for this job, and what the job is is eating food. They need test subjects for long space journeys, and yes, the food's probably not going to be exactly what you would consider uh, French cuisine. It's going to be a lot of dried foods, dehydrated foods, uh, foods you have to reconstitute with water, and your job on this 120-day mission, and uh, one little caveat here, you're also going to be in an enclosed environment with other people, but your job is to come up with tasty recipes and different combinations. This is, I think, more of a test of the psychology of traveling distances in outer space more than it is um, the food itself, because people psychologically, if they enjoy the food and enjoy um, the textures, the flavors, the variety, it ends up... Uh, making it a little bit better situation in an enclosed environment. You will also have to meet some of the same standards as the regular astronauts may uh, make too, so probably there's uh, physical uh, exams involved, stuff like that, so I imagine you're going to have to be in pretty good health to start this out. So if you have 120 days to spare and nothing better to do, maybe apply to NASA. This article comes from technobuffalo.com and as usual all the links will be down below in the description. I talked about the opera um, experiment in Italy where they beamed neutrinos to uh, from CERN to Italy and they were finding neutrinos that they thought possibly could have been traveling faster than the speed of light. The test originally wasn't that. The test was uh, I think for a neutrino oscillation where neutrinos change from one type to another and they just happened to catch the fact that According to their equipment, it may be possible that these neutrinos were traveling faster than the speed of light. Well, the latest release now seems to be that they're tracing this down to either a faulty os oscilloscope, no oscillator, a faulty oscillator, or a faulty cable connection. An optical fiber cable connection may have given them skewed results. With experiments of this type, timing is really essential, and you also, based on your equipment and known um, delays in timing or accelerations in timing due to different effects, you have to compensate. And so there's equipment and different types of things you do just to compensate for the timing differences. And if any of them are not functioning absolutely perfect, you're going to get timing differences and timing versus distance is how speed is calculated. So if any of those things go wrong, your speed is going to be off. What they're planning on doing now is in May they're going to rerun the tests with taking into account these effects that they've found. They're going to rerun them and see if they still get the same exact effect. I think this will pretty much take care of it as far as an explanation myself because of the fact in uh, natural phenomena when you have a, a star go into supernova it produces neutrinos and so far all of the neutrino effects we've seen in nature from uh, supernova have always obeyed the speed of light so uh, I don't see this as a good possibility where we're going to find at least the particle called a neutrino traveling faster than the speed of light. Next up, uh, a friend of mine, Star Hobo 14 has talked about he'd like to see more gaming uh, news in the TDD report, and I agree too. It's been a long time since I talked about gaming, and I'm going to try to set up and do a show, at least one TDD report, if not maybe uh, more than one, that concentrates on gaming as one of the main stories. But first off, I just want to throw this out too as far as gaming, and this is something I'm... Sometimes I'm almost a serious gamer, but most of the time I would probably consider myself a casual gamer. Well, one thing that bothers me and probably has from time to time with other people is the fact that when you play a game and you get stuck in one part of it, what do you do in that game to get past the part you're stuck? And do you want the game itself to assist you in getting past the stuck part? So I'm going to call for people in the comments here to express, <coughs> excuse me, how you would like the game to either help you or not help you at all. Would you like the game to maybe give you a choice, uh, especially in the easy levels, that you could click a button and it would give you a, a hand-holding walkthrough? Would you like it to maybe, by choosing a menu item, to give you a hint so that you could maybe get past the part you were stuck at? Now, I've myself, some games have just absolutely been ruined to me because I get to a certain point and nothing logical seems to make sense. Or do you want you know, some other way that the game itself would get you past? Some games, what they do is they actually skip over the hard part and let you come back to it later. To me, I don't like that idea at all. That's just 
kind of like avoiding the problem. So um, give me your opinion of what you like when you get, what would you like the game to do as far as helping you? Um, the article, <coughs> excuse me, that this is about is from Ars Technica. And the title of it is, Should Games Offer More Help When We Get Stuck? Last up, you know how I feel about public filming and uh, public rights to film and public, as a vlogger myself, I'm very much for, if at all possible, keeping those rights so that we can film when we want, what we want, as long as it's in public and done legally. Well, there was an incident out in Earhart, South Carolina, to where there was a hunting, uh, uh, this farm had a, a hunting, uh, uh, people doing hunting and an animal rights group had set up uh, out on the highway off of private property and while these guys were hunting legally on private land they set up a, a six-bladed or eight-bladed I believe helicopter they show a picture of it in the article here um, this is an article entitled animal rights groups says drone shot down um, they're showing uh, an eight-bladed helicopter here but whatever these people took and launched this helicopter to do surveillance over a private farm now, to me, yeah, I can see the right to public film, but that is rather endangering people. When you're intending to fly a craft like that with exposed propeller blades and not even flying that high in the air, and these things, I've seen the way these things fly, and sometimes they're just on the virtual edge of losing control. If you were out hunting legally or doing anything legally on private land, would you really want one of those flying close overhead? And uh, I don't know, I think myself, I would probably feel endangered and want to shoot the thing down, so... I would like to hear your opinion about that. If somebody is actually um, doing that kind of a thing and endangering other people with a, a craft like that, it, it could have been easily taken care of, too. This animal rights group could have easily rented an airplane, flown at 1,000 feet or higher, which is legal ability to fly. That's your legal airspace limit is 1,000 feet or above, and taken all the pictures they wanted all day long of the people doing the hunting or whatever other thing they want to uh, photograph on private land because they would be off the private land. To me, I don't know, flying several hundred feet above or a hundred feet above private land with a dangerous craft like that, it just don't cut it for me. So anyway, that's it for this week. Take care everybody. I will catch you next week.